What's going on guys? Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new 6th generation iPod Touch. And it's been a very long time since we've seen an update. In fact, the last time I unboxed one was 2012, when we saw the 5th generation, which was a complete redesign with a larger screen. But this one is pretty much a spec upgrade with some new colors. It's a pretty significant spec upgrade. We go from the A5 processor to an A8 with an M8 motion coprocessor. We go from a 5 megapixel rear-facing camera to an 8 megapixel eyesight camera. We also get some new colors, so gold has finally been added to the iPod lineup. We also get a new blue and a new pink, but space gray, silver, and product red remain unchanged. Now with all these new upgrades, we do lose one feature from the previous generation, which was the iPod loop button. So that feature is completely eliminated here. We also get four size configurations and prices, 16, 32, 64, and now 120 gigs at 199, all the way up to 399. Now, although the new iPod Touch pretty much borrows most of its parts from the iPad Air 2 and the iPhone 6, there is one new feature here, which is Bluetooth 4.1. This is the first time we're seeing this on an Apple device. But the iPod Touch, just like other Apple products, now supports 802.11ac Wi-Fi with dual band support. Now, the packaging is pretty familiar for the iPod Touch. We have this nice crystal case, which shows off the design and the color. Along the back, you have your capacity. So we have four capacities to pick from, so make sure you walk away with the right one. Of course, we have our iPod Touch branding along the side, Apple logo on the top, and on the bottom, you have your serial number information. Now, to open this box, you have this little piece of tape along the top to pull off. Once you pull this off, the lid flops open and is hinged toward the bottom with another piece of tape you can leave in place. Now, the iPod Touch is sitting in a plastic tray, which is clamped at either side on the top and bottom. Now, in order to remove it, you have to peel up the label. So, you have a little tab at the bottom. Just peel up the label and the casing will just pop off. And there we go. We have our naked iPod Touch ready to boot up. Now inside we have some paperwork with some instructions. Of course, this will vary depending on what version of iOS you're running. We also get a set of Apple stickers, which unfortunately are not color keyed to this iPod. In terms of the accessories, of course, we get a lightning to USB cable, which is nicely tied up here with this paper wrapper. We also get a set of ear pods, which are the cheaper variants. They do not include a remote control and microphone like the one on the iPhone. And we also don't get that carrying case like the iPhone. Taking a close look at the design of the iPod Touch, it's pretty much carried over here. Very familiar Apple language. It looks like the current iPads and very similar to the iPhones, but it lacks that curved edges. But of course, we get that nice chamfered metal edge, which I think looks really nice with this gold color. We have a 4-inch Retina display unchanged here. Resolution of 1136 by 640, good for 326 ppi. It's a really nice display, although not terribly large here. Of course, it's much smaller than the new iPhone 6. But this does mean that Apple is pretty much committed to the 4-inch form factor with this new generation. The iPod Touch also gets the upgraded FaceTime HD camera good for 1.2 megapixel photos, f2.2 aperture, and 720p HD video with backside illumination. Unfortunately, the iPod Touch is still lacking an ambient light sensor. Now, unfortunately, the iPod Touch did not get Touch ID, so the home button is pretty much unchanged, but you can see with this gold color, it's actually color matched to the gold finish, which is kind of nice. Along the side, we'll find these pill-shaped volume controls, which are metal and color matched to the body. Along the top, we'll find our sleep-wake power button, still on the top, not along the side like you see with the newest iPhones. On the bottom, we have our lightning connector, our speaker grill, and our headphone jack. You can see everything is color matched, including the surround of the lightning port and the grill of the speaker. On the back, we have our new 8 megapixel EyeSight camera, good for 1080p HD video. We also have an LED flash, pretty much carried over from last generation. And between those, we'll find our microphone. Now notice on the gold version and the space gray version, you do get a color match camera ring. Now toward the right, you'll find this black patch, which is a Wi-Fi window. Basically, this is a plastic trim piece, which is radio transparent, so Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can pass through it. We also get a very slight battery size increase. We go from 1,030 milliamp hours to 1,043 milliamp hours. Now the interface is iOS 8.4 and as always, the wallpaper matches the color of the iPod. So we have this new gold color, we have this new gold wallpaper. But there are several other wallpapers to pick from that are unique to the sixth generation iPod Touch. Of course, they match the new colors of the iPod such as that darker blue and the brighter pink. So of course you can pick those from the wallpaper selector. Now with the new eight megapixel eyesight camera and the new image processor built into the A8 chip, of course we get some new camera features which the previous iPod did not have such as 120 frames per second slow motion. We also get burst photographs. So you can take a burst photograph by tapping and holding the shutter release just like you can with previous iPhones and iPads. 
Of course, we get more resolution to work with, although we still have an f2.4 aperture, which is kind of small, doesn't let a lot of light in. This is pretty much the same camera that's on the iPad Air 2. So images come out a lot clearer than before. So we get good color accuracy. Images generally look a little more vibrant than before. And if you have great lighting conditions, images look great. Now, low lighting conditions is still not the best camera here. You still see a lot of green, but the A8 image processor does a pretty good job cleaning it up and brightening the photos. Now, in terms of the flash, it's not very bright and it's not a dual tone flash, so results can be mixed. Handheld video also looks really good here. So we do have software stabilization, which does a really good job cleaning up video, but we don't have optical image stabilization like we get with the 6 Plus, which I think is to be expected. What's going on guys? Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the front-facing camera on the iPod Touch 6th generation. So this is the new FaceTime HD camera, the same one that's on the iPad Air 2 and the iPhone 6 that launched last year. So it's a much better camera, lets a lot more light in. Images and video look much crisper and color accuracy is certainly much improved. Now it's still 720p HD video, just like before, and it's still 1.2 megapixels, but generally it's just a much better lens and much better sensor. Now just to compare them, this is the FaceTime HD camera on the iPod Touch 5th generation. So it's not terrible here by any means, but you can see it's a little darker, it's not as crisp and clear, and the colors are a little on the yellow side. Another thing that's improved with the iPod Touch 6th generation is the speaker quality. Now if you look at the previous generation, you can see the iPod loop feature was built into the area behind the speaker, which probably took away a lot of space. So with the new generation, that's completely removed. So the speaker seems to be louder with more dynamic range. So it sounds a little richer. So this makes it a much better handheld gaming device than it used to be. So let's take a listen to compare them side by side to see if you can tell the difference. In terms of our Geekbench scores, this is where we see massive gains. So we see almost a six-fold increase in performance over the previous generation. So we go from 215 to 1364 on the single core and 414 to 2443 on the multi-core score. Although the iPod Touch and the iPhone 6 have an A8 processor, it's clocked a little lower on the iPod Touch. So we see lower scores here. So the iPod Touch is clocked at 1.13 gigahertz versus 1.4 gigahertz on the iPhone 6. The sixth generation also doubles the RAM of the fifth generation. So we go from 500 to one gig of RAM, just like the iPhone 6. For day-to-day -day tasks, the new iPod is noticeably quicker, more reliable, and smoother than the fifth generation iPod Touch, which tended to bog down and sometimes stall on certain tasks. And that came with newer versions of iOS as the older hardware had a harder time keeping up with newer software. So this iPod Touch is definitely ready for iOS 9 and future releases. In terms of gaming performance, this is where we see massive gains here from the A5 chip to the 64-bit A8 chip, which supports the metal architecture for gaming development. So you should see much better gaming performance out of this iPod Touch than the previous generation. So in my testing here, games look great. They pretty much keep up with the iPhone 6 or the iPad Air 2. So frame rate is smooth, details are crisp, and performance is great. Now, personally, the only issue I have with gaming on the iPod Touch is just the size and resolution of the screen. There's not a lot of resolution to work with and the screen is pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see some of the details. So in the end, the iPod Touch is a significant improvement over the previous generation. It's actually one of the first iPod Touches to really meet almost parity with the current iPhone in terms of its specs. So this is really here for the long haul. So who knows how many iPod Touches we'll see in the future, uh, but this is here to stay for at least a few more years. Now, personally, I would like to see Touch ID on the iPod Touch, but I understand the need to keep costs down so it's affordable. And I would also like to see a larger screen, but with a thinner iPad mini arriving and with pricing kind of overlapping on the iPod Touch, you can see that maybe that's not necessary. Now, if you want to check out the new pink and blue colors available on the iPod Touch, Dom Esposito and Danny Winget will be covering those in their iPod Touch videos. So I'll leave those linked in the description below so you can check them out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video.